Which way did he go? That way, down through the garden. The storm. It's so dark you can't see. Dr. Rudd, there, there at the bottom of the terrace. Professor Laborde. Laborde, why I... Oh, good Lord. What, what is it? He, he must have fallen down the steps, broken his neck. He... He's dead. <laughs> Midnight, the witching hour when the night is darkest, our fears the strongest, and our strength at its lowest ebb. Midnight, when the graves gape open and death strikes. How? You'll learn the answer in just a minute in The Kabbalah. And now, Murder at Midnight. Tales of mystery and terror by radio's masters of the macabre. Our story by Robert Newman is The Kabbalah. A rambling house on the outskirts of a small university town. And in the house, a room that seems more like the cell of a medieval alchemist than the study of a college professor. Its walls lined with ancient volumes and astrolabes and other curious instruments. Bent over his desk, Dr. Rudd does not hear the knock on the door at first. But when it's repeated, he says, Come in. Alan's going, Father. He wanted to say good night to you. Oh, Yes, Adam. Good night. I was terribly sorry to hear about the decision of the Board of Trustees, sir. I mean, they're refusing to give you a grant to go on with your research. Oh, that. Well, it doesn't matter. I've about decided to give up the whole project anyway. Your book? Yes. Father, you're not serious. I, I thought you were almost finished with it. I am. All but the last chapter. I just can't seem to write that without additional research. And without the last chapter, why... The rest of the book is meaningless. Well, isn't there anyone you could talk to about it, sir? Anyone who could help you? I doubt it, Alan. I think I know as much about the occult as anyone in the world, except perhaps one man. Who was that, Father? The man I studied under at the University of Paris. And I haven't heard from him in over ten years. I'm not even sure that he's still alive. <laughs> Too bad this is the 20th century, not the 12th. How so, Dr. Rudd? Oh, it would have been very simple then. A pentacle, a pair of corpse candles, and I could summon up someone who would make things very easy for me. Yes, right now I really believe I would sell my soul for the help I need. Father, you mustn't say things like that, even as a joke. Well, you're right, Barbara. And no one knows it better than I. Well, good night, Alan. See you in the morning. Right, Dr. Rudd. Good night. I'll walk you down to the road, Alan. Oh, fine, dear. Pretty depressed, isn't he? Father? Yes. Not that I blame him. Four years' work. The definitive book on occultism, the supernatural. <gasps> Alan! Yes, I see it, too. Someone or something lying in the road. Come on. An, an old man... He's dressed so strangely. He looks like an Arab. wonder what he's doing around here. Anyway, he seems in a bad way. Here, I'll carry him into the house. You run ahead and tell your father. All right. In here, Alan, in my study. All right. They put him on the couch. What's wrong with him? Well, it's hard to say, but I think it's just exhaustion. Oh, Oh, his pulse is very weak. Barbara, call Dr. Stevens. Of course, Father. I... He's opening his eyes. Where? 
What is this place? No, it's all right. You're among friends. We're sending for a doctor. A doctor? Oh, you're kind, but it's too late. Allah stretches his hand out for me. Nonsense. All you need is some food, rest. No, and... no, I, I'm dying. But if you are indeed friends, one last request. Will you grant it? If we possibly can. I am a arch, a Sufi. I come of a long, ancient line. Will you see that I get proper burial? Oh, yes, of course. I have no gold, <laughs> money, but... <laughs> He's fainting. Loosen his robe, Alan. Right. Mm. <laughs> Say, he's got something hidden here. A uh, parchment scroll. The Kabbalah. Uh... You, you've taken the Kabbalah. It's all right. No, no, you must not. It's a curse. Into the fire. Destroy it. If you use it. Uh... Father. Yes. Yes, he's dead. May his soul rest in peace. You're very quiet tonight, Dr. Rudd. Thinking about the funeral? Huh? Our Arab friend? Oh, uh, yes, Alan. Partly. And partly about this. this. This parchment he had hidden in his room. It seems to be a form of the Kabbalah. That's right. That's what he called it when he got so excited. Wanted you to destroy it. But the Kabbalah is just the science of letters and numbers, isn't it? Mm, it's much more than that, Barbara. It's the science of the mystical attributes of letters and numbers, the basis for almost all occultism. But this system is different from any I ever saw before. Different? How? Well, this particular system tells how a question can be written out, the letters changed into numbers and manipulated. And when the numbers are changed back into letters, they will answer the question. Listen, Professor, what do you say we try it? Try it? Sure. Of course, it's a lot of nonsense, but... Well, why not? Oh, well, all right. There's paper and pencils on my desk. What are you going to ask, Father? Oh, something simple, something we can check. Me? I'm going to ask something really practical. Okay, Professor, let's go. How are you coming, Father? Almost finished. Now, uh, let's see. Zadek, Mem, Vav. Great Scott. What is it? But look at this. Here's my question. Will we have any visitors today? Uh -huh. And here's the answer. Two visitors. Professor Laborde and someone else. Professor Laborde? Do you remember my telling you yesterday that there was one person in the world who could give me the help I needed to finish my book? Yes. That man was Professor Laborde. Father, you you don't really believe it, do you? I don't know. Well, I, I told you I haven't seen or heard from him in ten years. But just hmm. the same... Dr. Rudd, look. Hmm? Look here, I got something, too. What is it, Alan? Well, here's my question. How can the professor get the money to continue with his research? Yes. Here's the answer. Call Mark Endicott. What? Of course. Why don't you, Father? He's always been interested in you and your work. Well, I just never thought of it. I'll go in and call him right away. <laughs> Well, Father, did you get him? Yes. Yes, it's... It's very strange. In what way? He said that he'd been thinking about me a good deal lately, and he's driving out here this evening to see me. There. That's the answer to your question. Two visitors. Professor Laborde and, and someone else. Well, he must be the someone else. You think so? Oh, of course. 
Somehow, I don't. Well, what do you mean, sir? I don't know. Except that I don't like it. beginning to look as if our cabal is a washout after all. What makes you say that? Well, 11 o'clock and no sign of either Laborde or Endicott. I can't understand it. Endicott definitely said that he was driving out here and that he was leaving immediately. He probably changed his mind because of the storm. Well, it's still pretty bad out, isn't it? Yes, but it's not like him. You think he'd phone us and let us know? Oh, perhaps that's he now. Hello? Yes. This is Professor Rudd speaking. Who? Oh, yes. What? But that's impossible. I spoke to him only a few hours ago, and... Why? Oh, I, I can't believe it. You're sure? Oh, I see. But thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Who was it, Father? That was Mark Endicott's attorney. His attorney? What did he want? Mark Endicott was killed at about six o'clock this afternoon. Killed? On his way here, an auto accident. His attorney called to tell me Endicott had left me a $5,000 bequest for research. What? Father, the Kabbalah. It said you were to call him for the money to continue your work. It didn't actually say he was coming out here. No. Wait a minute. I mean, you really think that... I don't know, Alan. But I do know that if I hadn't called him, he wouldn't have started driving here in the storm. He wouldn't have had the accident and been killed. And I probably wouldn't have gotten the money. But, Father, if it's true, if it has some sort of supernatural power, then what about Professor Laborde? It did say he was coming. Oh, please, Barbara, I told you I don't know. Endicott was my friend. Now he's dead. And somehow I feel as if I... Father, the door. Yes. Yes, let's... Let's see who it is. Great Scott, Professor. If it is Laborde, do you realize what this means? Yes, Alan. If it is, why, well, the thing's priceless. Absolutely priceless. Why, well, I hope... I beg your pardon. I'm sorry to trouble you, oh, but... Come in, Professor Laborde. Come in. We've been expecting you for some time now. An ancient manuscript which can foretell the future. A dead man and a visitor from the dead. As the clock strikes twelve for murder at midnight. to Murder at Midnight and the Kabbalah. It's just a moment or two later, and Professor Laborde is being shown into Dr. Rudd's study. In here, Professor Laborde. Barbara, will you take the professor's things? Oh, of course, Father. Thank you, my dear. You're very kind. But there's something I do not understand, Dr. Rudd. When you opened the door, you said you had been expecting me. Since early this afternoon. But that is impossible. Completely impossible. I'm here entirely by accident. I had no idea you lived here or anywhere near here. I lost my way in the storm, uh, knocked at your particular door by chance to, to ask for directions. Nevertheless, we've been expecting you. But excuse me, how could you have been? Alan. Yes, sir? Show Professor Laborde the Kabbalah, will you please? Right, Professor. Here you are, sir. Kabbalah? Look at it, Professor. Tell me what you think of it. Interesting. Very interesting. Of course, I cannot be sure without examining it thoroughly. But it appears to be even older than the Black Grimoire. And its form, 
resembles that of the key of Solomon. Professor Laborde, it's my belief that it is the key of Solomon. What? But it can't be. It's been written about for centuries, of course, mentioned in hundreds of works, from Trismegistus down. But there's never been any proof that it ever actually existed. And still, where did you get it? From an old Arab who came here last night and died here. The main thing is we tested it. Tested it? Yes. yes, we asked two questions. The answer to one of them prophesied your coming here. And the other, well, that came true, too. But this is beyond words. If it's true, then it's the most priceless discovery that has ever... Professor Rudd, may I try it? Use it to ask a question, too? Well, I... I don't know, Professor Laborde. I... Uh, please. For years now, ever since I began studying the supernatural... There's been something, one thing I've always said I'd give my very life to know. If it can tell me that, you must let me, Rod. And you must let me do it while I'm alone. Well, all right. Ah, good. Come on, Alan, Barbara. We'll wait outside. Is it now, Professor? It's 20 hours. Hmm. He's been at it for quite a while. Yes. If he doesn't call us in another minute or two, we'll go in. I'm probably being very silly, but I don't like this, any of it. Why not, Father? I don't know, but. Oh, no, no, What's no, that? No, Professor Laborde. Yes, Come on. Yes, Professor Laborde, what is it? What's happened? What? What are you doing? He's burning something in the fire. Oh, Father, it's his hands. He's holding them in the fire, burning. Oh, great Scott, Professor Laborde, stop. Stop, have you gone mad? Fire! Only fire can burn my hands clean again. I asked. Now I must pay. Laborde. Let me go. Let go. I am coming. I will pay. I'll Professor Laborde, come back. Please. Quick, Alan. Okay. Which way did he go? That way. Down through the garden. The storm. It's so dark you can't see. Dr. Rudd. There. There at the bottom of the terrace. Professor Debord. Debord, why... Oh. oh, good Lord. Well, what is it? He... Oh, he must have fallen down the steps, broken his neck. He... He's dead. <laughs> him down. Oh, gently. Yes, sir. Father, are you sure that... Yes, Barbara, I'm sure. He's dead. But what made him do it? Go running out there that way? It, it must have been something to do with the Kabbalah. He was going to ask it a question. Yes, Alan, it has something to do with the Kabbalah. And, and standing there with his hands in the fire, as if he were trying to burn them clean. Father, what was the question he asked? What answer did he get? I think perhaps I can guess. The old Arab, he warned us, remember? He said it was accursed, evil, that if we used it... Wait a minute, Dr. Rudd. Hmm? Laborde said he'd give his life to know the answer to that question, and now he's dead. Yes, Alan, that's what was in my mind, too. That and one more thing. Do you remember what I said just before you found the old Arab in the garden? That I'd make a pact with the devil, sell my very soul for the help I needed to finish my book? No, Father, you're not serious. You don't mean you really believe I've it. I've lived too long, my dear, seen too many strange things to disbelieve anything. If the Kabbalah is everything we think it is, if it is the key to the future, to all knowledge, if it can answer any question we put to it, then there are only two sources from which it can draw its power. One good... And one evil. And... and you think... If God had wished us to be able to foresee the future, we should be able to foresee it. 
On the other hand, if it's evil, well, there's usually a penalty involved. The board. He said something about paying, too. Who, who must be paid, and how? There's only one way to find out, through the Kabbalah itself. Give it to me, Alan. No, please, no. I'm sorry, Barbara, I must. There's no need for you to stay here, or Alan. No, Father. We'll stay, both of us. Very well. Then, here goes. Shivering, darling. Are, are you cold? Shall I build up the fire? No, Elna. I'm not cold. What was that? It sounded like the outside door opening. Maybe oh, I... I... Father. Uh, Father, what is it? Are you finished? Uh, yes. Yes, I'm finished. And... And what... Look. Here's the question. Who must be paid? And how? And here's the answer. Turn around, and you will see. Father, the door, the, the door behind us, it, it just opened. Yes. I don't dare turn around. You needn't. Right in front of you, there on the wall. Look. Something black, like a stain, a blot. But it's spreading, moving. Like an octopus. Or like... It's shadow. It's... It's coming toward us. What... What in heaven's name is it? Whatever it is, whatever happens to us, no one shall ever again be cursed as we've been cursed. The Kabara, give it to me. Father, what are you doing? What I should have done when I first saw it. Destroy it. Throw it into the fire. It's coming closer. Closer. Professor, isn't there anything we can do? Anything that... <gasps> Father, look. The parchment burning. They are in the wall. The shadow of the Andions. In the shape of the crooks on Sata. The first cross. Good Lord. The shadow, it's wavering. Drawing back, retreating. I'm going to turn around, see what... No, wait. Wait until... All right. Now. There's... There's nothing there. The board? The board? Dr. LeBoard. Someone just came in. Who's there? Who is that? Oh, excuse me. I, I'm terribly sorry. I'm looking for someone. An old man with white hair and white beard. His name's... Holy smoke, there he is. Dr. LeBoard. Dr. LeBoard. I can't answer you. He's dead. Dead? Who are you, anyway? Well, an attendant at a private hospital in town. We've been taking care of him ever since he got to this country. Nervous breakdown. He disappeared this afternoon, and... He'd been talking about you so much lately that I had a hunch he might have come out here. Talking so about me? But he said he had no idea I lived here. Of course he knew. I told you he wasn't right in the head. That was one of the signs. Father, if it's true, if his mind was going, that would explain what he did. Burning his hands, running away like that. You mean the Kabbalah didn't have any occult power? What about the money from Endicott? Well, just a coincidence. And what just happened? That shadow we saw on the wall? Well, it was only a shadow. It could have been just our imagination. Yes, Barbara, it could have been. But somehow, I don't think it was. An old professor stands next to the body of his friend, staring at the fireplace where the secret of the ages has gone up in smoke as the clock strikes twelve for... Murder! At
remember to be with us again when death whispers from the darkness in an unknown tongue and the clocks strike 12 for murder at midnight. The part of Dr. Rudd was played by James Van Dyke. With music by Bert Berman, Murder at Midnight was directed by Anton M. Leader. 